The Lion Arrow Super Arrow Indicator, which is offered for various platforms on the Trading Finder website. Traders can easily download the indicator file for both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 platforms from this dedicated section. To learn more about precisely how this indicator works and its full functionality, they can carefully read this informative page. From the Navigator section, we select the indicator file and by dragging the file onto the chart, we run the indicator. Once the indicator is running on the chart, it starts identifying and displaying trading opportunities on the chart. The Lion Arrow Super Arrow Indicator is a special and practical tool that allows traders to receive buy and sell signals directly on the chart. R2. This indicator effectively uses several standard indicators to identify crucial pivot or reversal points in price and clearly displays buy and sell signals on the chart. The best time to utilize these signals is consistently in the direction of the prevailing trend. For example, when the price is making progressively higher highs and higher lows, we can confidently use the buy signals to enter a profitable buy trade and ignore the sell signals that go against the trend. Or conversely, when the price is making lower highs and lower lows, we can effectively use the sell signals to enter a sell position and ignore the buy signals. In the settings section, in the input section, we have several options. In the first input, we can set the calculation period for the fast or short-term moving average here. In the second input, we can set the calculation period for the slow or long-term moving average. According to the indicator's calculation algorithm, whenever the short-term moving average crosses the long-term moving average either upwards or downwards, it is considered one of the confirmation factors for continuing the signals. In the next input, we can set the calculation period for the RSI. In the following input, we can specify the denoise value, which relates to the indicator's denoising. The higher we set this value, the less noise we will have, and the indicator's signals will be issued with higher accuracy. Conversely, if we set it lower, the noise within the indicator will increase, its accuracy will decrease, but more signals will be displayed for us. In the next three inputs, there are settings related to the Bollinger Bands. In the first input, we can specify the calculation period for the Bollinger Bands. In the second input, we can set the calculation period for the Bollinger Band Shift. And finally, in the third input, we can change the deviation for the Bollinger Bands to our desired value. In the next two inputs, we can specify the calculation values for the bull's power indicator and finally for the bear's power indicator with their default values already set here. In the following input, we can set the distance value between the markers and the pivot points, which is set to 10 by default. In the next section, we can specify whether to send alerts when buy and sell signals are generated. By default, this parameter is disabled. If this input is set to false, the next two inputs are also not used. However, if we set the alert parameter to true, in the following input we can enable or disable sending alerts to the mailbox when signals are generated. And if this option is set to true, provided that we have completed the email settings in the tools section under options, in the next input we can also enable or disable sending alerts as notifications. In the next parameter, we can specify the time interval between alert messages, which by default is set to four candles. This means that when signals are generated, alerts will be issued for up to four candles, and the signals will be valid for up to four candles. In the last parameter, we can enter the subject of the alert or order message here as desired. Well friends, we've reached the end of this indicator tutorial. We'd be happy if you share your comments and suggestions with us in the comments section.